Today on Kitchen and Craft, I'm gonna make something that I've never done before on this channel. I'm gonna do a grandma style pizza using a same day pizza dough. That's right, if you wake up in the morning and you're thinking, I want pizza for dinner, this is your go-to dough. It makes great sheet pan pizza. Very important here, I wanna mention that this video is a collaboration with Danny over at Mile Zero Kitchen and Hendrik over at The Bread Code. They're each making grandma pizzas too, but uh, Danny is using a pre-ferment uh, made with a commercial yeast for his dough and Hendrik is using a natural starter for his pizza dough. So go check out their videos when you're done watching mine. All right, with all of that info aside, let's get right into it. All right, I have the bowl to my mixer right here and to it, I'm gonna add 348 grams of bread flour. Now, I just decided to use bread flour for this recipe. I think it gives a little bit more of a firmer dough, but uh, feel free to use all-purpose flour if you want to, or maybe a different type of flour that you have on hand. Uh, the protein percentage for this particular flour is just a little bit over 12%. I'm gonna grab my instant yeast and I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon to the flour, okay? Honestly, I don't have a scale uh, small enough to measure this quantity, but it's gonna come in somewhere around three quarters of a gram. So I'm using volume here. Just give that a quick whisk to incorporate it evenly throughout the bread flour. There we go. Next up, I'm gonna add 243 grams of warm water. Okay, this is just tepid water, it's not super hot. Now this will give me a 70% hydration dough for the grandma pizza. Now we're gonna add nine grams of kosher salt to the pizza dough. It's about two and a half percent salinity, um, a little bit lower than I typically do with my doughs, but let's see how it turns out, all right? Now I'm gonna bring the bowl over to the mixer. I gotta get that set up first, but yeah, I'm gonna bring it over there and uh, we're gonna mix it until the dough or all these ingredients come together and um, form a single homogenous mass, all right? Alrighty, I don't know if you guys can hear what's going on outside, but there's lightning and thunder and all sorts of crazy rain. It's, it's nuts out there. Oh, and it's, it's pretty dark in the kitchen too. I'm gonna turn my mixer on to setting three. That's low to medium low speed if you have a KitchenAid like this one right here. Again, we're gonna mix everything until uh, we get a nice homogenous dough, but we're not gonna totally knead it yet. We're gonna let it rest for about 20 minutes just to let the flour completely hydrate before we continue kneading. Okay, this is what you want your dough to look like, all right? Just like that, okay? Doesn't need to be uh, super smooth. You just don't want a lot of dry bits floating around in the bowl. You want it to be one single mass, that's it. All right, see you guys in 20 minutes. All right, get this guy back in place. Get the dough hook reattached, there we go. Now, I'm gonna turn this on to about medium speed and then I'm gonna just knead the dough for 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. You're looking for a nice, smooth surface. That's when you know the dough's ready to come out. Uh, and we'll go on to the next step, okay? All right, let's take a look. It's definitely nice and smooth. <laughs> Check it out. Check this out. See that? It's super smooth. It's got some resistance. Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna stroll back over here and we're gonna turn the dough out on to the counter. Try to get as much of it as possible. Don't leave any behind if you can help it. Let's just hit this with a little bit of flour. Then, I'm just gonna roll this around, this dough around until it becomes a nice tight ball. Yeah, that looks, that looks great. Perfect. Now, I've got a greased bowl right here and I'm just gonna transfer the dough ball into the bowl. We're gonna cover it up nice and tight and just let the dough chill at room temp for three or four hours, let it ferment until it's doubled in size. And then we'll break out the sheet pan and start forming our pizza. Here is the reveal. Ah, it's sticking. Ah, shoot. There we go. So this dough ball, let's see, it was uh, 
This thing rested at three o'clock and it's six o'clock now. So this is three hours of fermentation. It's doubled in size. This 600 gram dough ball is gonna fit this 14 by 14 pan perfectly, okay? This gives you one grandma style pizza. I'm gonna add a generous amount of oil to this pan. Could even be upwards of a quarter cup. <laughs> What this is gonna do is uh, when this pizza bakes, it's gonna sort of fry the crust on the bottom, get it nice and golden brown and crispy. Makes a huge difference in texture and flavor in the pizza. It also won't stick. I mean, this is a Lloyd's pan. So uh, this pan here, the pizza probably wouldn't stick anyways, but the oil definitely, it definitely won't stick. So now I'm just gonna spread it all around, get the edges of the pan, whoops. Make sure you get those two. There, that looks great. Now, I'm not gonna turn the dough out into this pan just yet. Instead, I'm gonna take another step. I saw this on another YouTube channel and I will definitely add a link to that in the video description box. But the pizza maker in that video actually, oh, I need some flour, actually rolled the dough out a little bit before they added the pizza to the pan. Just kind of gave it a head start with rolling. I thought that was pretty genius. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Here we go. I'm gonna try to roll it out a little bit larger than the pan itself, if I can do that. That way, when it settles in the pan, uh, it will shrink down a little bit and hopefully fit most of it without me having to fiddle with it too much. That's about the best I can do here. So. Now, I'm just gonna fold it up and bring it over. Just like that. All right, see, I got a little bit of a head start here. It's gonna have to do for now. This looks pretty darn good. All right, I'm gonna repurpose some tin foil that I used from a previous pizza. Always reuse stuff when you can or grab a shower cap or something when you're poofing the dough. Try not to use plastic film as much as you can. That's, that stuff is not good for the environment. This will cover the dough, and I'm gonna let this rest at room temperature for another hour or so. What you're gonna see is the dough will start to proof again. So you want it to puff up a little bit inside the pan, and then you know it's ready to go. All right, let's check this out. See, this is what I'm talking about. This dough has started to proof a little bit. It's puffed up. This is what you want. Now it's time to top the pizza, okay? I've got some whole milk semi-dry mozz that I'm gonna add in an even layer all the way around the pizza from edge to edge. Now, some grandma pies, those guys have crusts around the perimeter. I've seen that before. I'm kind of more of an edge to edge cheese and sauce kind of guy. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. But feel free to do whatever you want, honestly. I'm using 454 grams of this mozzarella. That's about a pound. So. Uh, just so you know, this looks good. All right, great. Now it's time to add some tomato sauce. I'm just gonna dollop it on, okay? Just sort of randomly here. I'm actually using my New York style pizza sauce. I'll leave a link to that in the upper right-hand side of this video. You can check that out if you want to. This looks pretty good. There we go. I'm gonna bake this pizza at 450 degrees, but if you don't have convection, go 475 and it's gonna go top rack for about 10 to 15 minutes, okay? You might wanna rotate it halfway through as well. All right, what do you guys think about this pizza right here? That looks like a winner, huh? All right? Let me, uh, let me get this onto a rack so it can cool for a few minutes. I don't wanna burn the roof of my mouth off trying to taste this thing. See here. Let's see if I can do this with some finesse, huh? There we go. Yeah, pretty looking. Check this out. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> that looks pretty good. All right, a grandma style pizza is somewhere between a New York style and a Sicilian style pizza on the thickness factor. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I cut into it, all right? I'm gonna cut this into nine pieces. And that's kind of what I'm talking about in terms of thickness. 
Just like that, all right? Nice, okay. Yeah, it's nice and crispy, that's for sure. I think I'll take a corner piece. All right, moment of truth. Man, spilling everywhere. I have a big bite. Mm. Not bad for a same day dough. Typically I like to go for that extended fermentation, but when you're in a pinch, this, this dough recipe will do just fine. It's a great pizza. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Now go check out Danny and Hendrick's videos as well. They're doing grandma style pizzas, you're just using different leaveners. So I'm sure it's killer, you don't wanna miss it. That's it, I'll catch you guys next time. Mm.